Welcome back to the weekly news roundup. This is the COVID roundup dystopia edition. And uh, all I got to say, it's just getting weirder and weirder and weirder out there. I actually had to start with something from Pennsylvania. I had to search this out because I do remember our uh, seriously convert, uh, confused person. Like, we, we are literally following a science advisor who would fail a 1980s gender studies course and who cannot tell you what chromosomes are, apparently. Um, but this is the person that's kind of forcing all these various mandates out on us. And uh, we are, they're talking here about Pennsylvania to roll out the COVID alert PA contact tracing app. Know it now, get it now, COVID alerts. And so, of course, uh, um, Dr. Rachel Levine, um, Dr. Rachel Levine says a few times, this will not be forced on us. But the way Levine and the werewolf of Harrisburg are going, I will not be surprised if before the end of all this nonsense, this is required at least somewhere. Kind of like, you know, hey, Massachusetts, they're forcing vaccines on all the students. You just have to have a contact tracing app. Of course, Penn State University, they are requiring you to participate in contact tracing. What happens when this app comes out and they go, and the state government who funds a lot of Penn State University goes, you will, you will force the app. And then the students will be forced to have it. Kind of curious to see. Uh, but in this, this is the, the most recent article I could find, which was actually just a couple days ago. But um, Dr. Rachel Levine, and I do that because I, I yeah, never mind. We're not going to go there right now. But I want you to know the entire system is anonymous. It's anonymous. It's anonymous. Keep that in mind. Keep this in mind. The entire system is completely voluntary. It does not really track your travels. It doesn't really, really track your travels. But instead uses the same tech our phone uses to communicate to one another. At this point in time, reading that sentence, Dr. Levine has no earthly idea what Dr. Levine is talking about. Okay. Okay, let's break this down. It does not really track your travels. Well, that's debatable. But instead uses the same tech our phones use to communicate with one another. People, our phones don't communicate with one another. I don't know what you're talking about. Now, to use these apps, you have to turn on Bluetooth, and uh, whoops, we covered it not too long ago, but yes, Google was actually caught tracking all of this data and storing it and using it inappropriately. But this is what we're being put forced on us. We are committed and conscious of providing the privacy and security of all PAs. Um, Pennsylvanians, I guess. Uh, we are working with other states to ensure it works with other states as well. All our efforts are designed to support our communities to lessen the impact of the contagious virus, says Levine. App utilizes technology from Apple and Google to measure time and distance near another device within Bluetooth range. Users who download the app will be alerted if they spent more than 15 minutes or more near a person who tested positive. Which is very hilarious, this 15 minutes is the important thing. It makes me wonder why the one of the local townships here makes it illegal to drive through the drive through without a mask on. Interesting, just saying. But if you remember when these apps came out and, I, and we cover them in some COVID news, we also covered some of these in uh, in some of the privacy news, we talked a lot about this API where they're like, we're just developing the API, that's it. Well, apparently that's not it because as of this week, Apple in the latest update, you don't need an app anymore. It all does it in Apple's magic software that gets force installed on your device automatically. And Google's rolling the same thing out. So now we don't even need the apps. We don't need to intentionally install anything. Why are they doing this? Well, we just found that people were too slow to adopt it. They had to go out and there was confusion about what app they needed and all this kind of stuff. Let's just go ahead and solve it. The very thing they said they would not do, and I mentioned they were going to do, they decided to start doing it. They decided to start doing it. You do not need an app anymore. The latest versions of iOS, the latest versions of Android, it pushes this on. It's no longer just an API. It's you turn it on and it just works. And Google's already been caught abusing the data. 
Isn't it very funny that we are these big tech companies are preparing for a society that perpetually has to be monitored to make sure you have not come close to anybody. Guys, go read the World Economic Forum's materials. It might scare the hell out of you. Just a thought. But, of course, we want to go through and look at the numbers because there were some interesting things this week that you may, might have seen. In fact, they kind of rolled out on Sunday. Right, and they might have rolled out Friday, and I just didn't catch them early enough. Uh, for the news, but uh, this is actually something that came out. Now, this is updated September 2nd, so that would be two days ago, Wednesday. So this is um, this is part of the demographic data. So last time we looked at um, uh, we looked at one of the other reports. This one covers our demographic data. So this is how much this impacts us. This is not Alex Jones Infowars. This is the Centers for Disease Control. So we are doing everything from Centers for Disease Control. Of course, as we covered last week where the journalists are like, the CDC is blah, 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 I'm getting evil now. Now a bunch of these journalists are wanting to completely disagree and do everything and say, don't even follow the CDC anymore. Why? Because the CDC now disagrees with the logically missing crap that is inside of their head. Cover the data, follow the science, follow the science, follow the science. Here's the science, we don't like the science. Let's do something else instead. So let's look at the science. Let's look at what the data actually says. Age and sex. All right, so age and sex. This is how the uh, how the, Im the virus is impacting people. So uh, a total of 170,000 deaths, okay? Um, under, the, a, under the age of one, 18. Gonna kill all of our children, I mean, for sure. 14 1 to 4s and 28 5 to 14s, 315 to 24s. Um, now, actually, one of the reports, they're actually combining all of these guys together, and giving us the what 350 ish number all at once. 25 to 34s, only 1,000 of the 170,000 deaths. But just remember these numbers here for a second. Uh, 35 to 44, we got 3,400. We have 9,000 up to the 54. We got 21,000 up to the 64. And then this is actually where the bulk of your cases are. So these three numbers here, 53 plus 45 plus 36, that is 130, which is well over 75% of the 170. So over 65 years of age, you seem to have more problems. And there's a good reason for this we're going to get into. Male breakdown, female breakdown. Um, here is your provisional deaths. Yeah. Now, some of this is low because death certificates are not in yet. But by the time you get back here, I mean, these are getting to be fairly accurate weeks. This is the big spike. So you can kind of see, you know, 0 to 24 years of age, 17. 17. And that, we're going to lock everything down. 17 deaths. All right. In fact, of all those deaths, once again, just as a way of reminder, two states, 60% of these deaths were in two states. But this is kind of where we are now. So let's see, let's go back. Let's go back one month's time. So in one month's time, this should be fairly accurate data. So in one month's time, we've had, um, what is this? Two, four, five, six, seven thousand deaths, which is not a lot for a country as large as ours. Not a lot at all. Very small number. Uh, places of deaths, um, blah, blah, blah. Now, this is the section of the chart that caused a lot of ruckus this year or this, this week. 6% of COVID deaths, it was the only cause mentioned. <laughs> okay, so this is where they're saying. So what this is looking at is the idea of comorbidities. Now, Italy looked really bad back in March, and we're like, we were kind of keeping an eye on that. And then a report came out, and I think that one was in... Oh, I just had to look this article up again today. Um, that one might have been uh, Proceedings National Academy of Science, or was it um, was it the Lancet? It was one of the three big medical journals. 
They had one in, in Italy, and then they also did one in New York, and all of the data was exactly the same. If you are old and have multiple comorbidities, COVID tends to kill you. But for a person who is generally reasonably healthy, only 6% of all deaths, COVID was the only cause. Now, what we don't know is what are the age of these 6%. I'm inclined to say they are older people. And I'm going to show you why that is for a moment. But this is the thing that, that um, became big. So this means that of all of these 170,000 deaths, only 9,000 deaths were caused by the direct cause of COVID. That's what this number means. Now, for the other 94%, COVID can push it along the uh, along faster. They can ex accelerate your death. The question is, how long did these people have? Because there's actually a test that determines this. It's called the Carlson Comorbidity Index. And this index here, this is the index that was used to look at uh, the cases in New York City. And when that article came out in New York City, this was the comorbidity test that they did. So what you have is you have a scale. I believe if I remember correctly, it's a 10 point scale. So what this is, is it gives you a percentile chance of surviving the next 10 years. So if you go into the 70 to 79 year age, which is where most of these people are at, you only have a 77% chance of living the next 10 years, which is honestly not a bad shot. I mean, that's really not too bad. If you add different things, like, hey, if you've had a myocardial infarction, that means a heart attack. If you've had a heart attack, hey, you get a point. If you've had a heart attack and you're otherwise healthy and under the age of 50, 96% chance you're gonna live another 10 years. All right, so um, let's see, CH, uh, CHF, I gotta remember which one that one is. Um, nocturnal dyspnea, um, diuretics, digitalis. Okay, so other heart-related issues peripheral vascular disease, um, cerebro, uh, cerebrovascular accident with minors. So in other words, if you've had a head injury, that's considered a comor comorbidity. Dementia, you get a plus one for that. COPD, you get a plus one. You'll see that most of these are plus ones. But the problem is if you get to be like 55, 60 years old, you've had a heart attack and you have COPD, this bumps you down to only a 53% chance to live 10 more years. That's what the, the chart's doing. And then you look at all these different things. If you have mild liver disease, you have mi uh, moderate to severe liver disease. If you have diabetes, end organ damage gets a plus two. Uncomplicated diabetes is plus one. Um, so you can kind of see what you get. A metastatic tumor. Oh, you're screwed. <laughs> <laughs> So here's the thing, AIDS, yeah, good luck. All right, so here's the thing, right? So when you're doing these indexes, if you're getting a person who's over the age, year, age of 80 years old, let me turn off everything else here. Okay, just being 80 years old, you already only have a 50% chance of living 10 years. If you add something like COVID to it, this accelerates the, the process. This is why I believe that the, the 6% is probably all in the older age group because they're already high up on the Charleston comorbidity index. And that's really one of the things that's used to determine what are comorbidities and what impact do they actually have on you. So it appears as though the coronavirus is an accelerator of uh, of these rates, not a whole lot more, which is why we just don't see deaths in young people. We just don't see deaths in healthy people. In fact, with all of these, we're getting the case counts in Center County just going through the roof, which happens when you dig for gold because we have the university students are here and part of the compact the students make, you have to comply with testing mandates. They are testing 1% of all students per day. I do not know how many students are on campus right now. The last year we have statistics was 2018. There were 45,000 students on the local campus in my town. If there's only half of that right now, it means every single day they are forcing the testing of over 250 students every single day. Needless to say, we've had 147 cases found this week. Then these get added on and we never know exactly are they linked to the university or not. And then they're not showing us the negative results from the university, but they're showing us the positive results. And so all hell is breaking loose in this county. And really, this is massive amounts of infections by people who are not 
and a steeply infected population. It's kind of like what happened to the NFL this week. I don't know if anybody follows the NFL. I don't. Uh, But since I follow the COVID numbers, I will follow this particular story. Several teams started canceling after all these tests came out. So they were getting very few cases, very few cases, kind of like my county here, very few cases. And all of a sudden they had 77 cases in one day. And they're like, what's going on here? And so it turns out that every one of these cases that tested positive, they were all false. They were all negative. We're going to start seeing this result all throughout the various different things, right? We are going to see all of these cases where they've taken it one step further. They've cycled it one more time further, just enough to get the positive result. Why? Hospitals are incentivized for having COVID patients. If you go to get a knee surgery to a hospital... Most hospitals are now requiring that you get tested. If you test positive for coronavirus, you are a coronavirus hospitalization even though you're there to get a knee surgery because the hospital gets money from the government for that. The tests, which most of the tests are right now, I think 90% of the tests right now in the United States are going through commercial labs, which are getting kickbacks to get the tests done. If the tests are all coming back negative, The government's going to be like, eh, we don't need these anymore. And these companies are going to lose money. We have produced an incentivized way to find positive cases. And so the way a PCR test works, PCR is a doubling. You put a small sampling in there, and then what it does is it cycles. It goes through a temperature cycle, which is going to simulate the the, uh, biochemical replication of a DNA strand. All right, and then what you're doing is you're testing for that DNA strand. Well, each cycle doubles. So if you, if you just add just one more cycle to the end, beyond the scope what's supposed to be done, you will find a positive sample every single time you want to. And that's what seems to be going on in some of the labs where we're getting a whole lot of positive samples. Of course, the, the governor of Ohio, uh, was it last week or I think it was two weeks ago, he had two tests done in one day. One of them was positive, one of them was negative. Of course, he accepted the negative test, but for us common people, if we got a positive or negative, we would accept the positive test because, you know, we're just the little people and, and he's the government official. But this is the type of stuff that's happening all over the place. So we have only 6% of all deaths are from COVID. Over 77, you know, I think the number is like 90%. So this is 77 false positives in the NFL. But they were saying about up to 90% of these tests are completely inaccurate. So we have inaccurate reporting. We have the numbers are highly inflated. And companies are profiting. Like, you put in... If you declare war on a nation, the economy goes up because you have to ramp up sales of bullets and other war-related material. Well, what happens when you declare war on a virus? There are like 3M stock probably going through the roof. Haven't looked at it lately, but they're one of the big manufacturers of masks. Medical supply companies are making boatloads of money. Testing supply companies are making boatloads of money. Hospitals are making boatloads of money. Meanwhile, the data is telling us this really isn't a big deal, but they're forcing us to lock down. They're forcing vaccines. They're forcing all sorts of insane protocols. And the rules seem to apply to the common people, but they do not seem to apply to everyone else. To end in a hilarious little story, Uber will require some riders to take mask selfies. As if a mask can't be taken on and put off in a heartbeat. So if a driver spots you without a mask, you may be required to take a selfie. This is like, they are producing this 1984 snitch culture. 1984, like, you got to snitch on your, your children are trained to snitch on your parents. Kind of sounds like that teacher in Philadelphia who's like, how do we indoctrinate these kids with the parents hearing? What? All right, so they're, they're in, you know, encouraging snitching. So if an Uber driver sees a passenger not wearing a mask, he's supposed to report it to Uber. And then the the passenger will have to take a selfie wearing a mask before he's allowed to use a service again. I will remind you guys, every time you call an Uber, a little seal somewhere gets clubbed. Okay? Don't use Uber. Don't use Uber. My lands. This is insane. Insane stuff. 
Snitch culture, snitch culture. Like our local townships, they're like, we will encourage the local businesses to call the police if you're standing in line without a mask. Well, that will endear me to want to do business at your establishment. Force me to go into... Yeah, you're going to call the police on me because I'm waiting outside not wearing a mask? Screw you. And they're like, try to support your local businesses. Screw you. When your local businesses are supporting what I'm doing, I'll support my local businesses. That's why I drive 30 miles away to go do my grocery shopping right now. Because they've stood up to their government. Meanwhile, mine's rolling over going, oh, we don't care. Guys, take a stand. I'm not supporting a local business that's going to require this crap. If Dairy Queen wants to call the police on me because I go through their drive-thru without a mask, I just won't shop at Dairy Queen. Sorry. Sorry. And then you're like, this Amazon's destroying the world. Yeah, it's the only place I can shop right now. Very interesting. So there's my thoughts here. Let me know your thoughts on all this nonsense. Are you getting frustrated with all this crap? Let me know in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.